In this video, I'm going to build off my last two videos where I built a basic robot file and a basic autonomous op mode using some simple drive functions. Now I want to make a new autonomous mode that is going to make decisions based off of what the camera sees. And specifically, we're going to be looking for the view marks created in the old FTC challenge relic recovery. Now, they gave us a really nice sample to start from. We're going to use the Concept View Mark Identification Webcam sample file. Make sure you give it a name. I'm using Drive to View Mark. I'm going to preserve the sample, and then I'm going to click OK, and it'll give me the sample file. Go ahead and open up the new op mode. You'll see that it starts off with a large chunk of comments. So we'll skip past those because these aren't terribly important comments for us. Next, you're going to see some import statements. What they do is they bring in existing code that we want to use into our op mode. Here we have another block of comments, and you're going to want to read these. There is one important comment on lines 65 and 66 talking about the necessity of going and getting a API key for Vuforia. Euphoria is the software we use to identify view marks. It's free, and I'll put a link in the video description with the instructions on how to get the API key. All right, I want to set the name. This is the name that's going to show up on the phone. And also, I'm not doing a teleop. I'm doing an autonomous mode. The next line should look suspicious. I want to be able to run my op mode, so I need to remove the disabled flag. Now we're going to start editing the actual Java class. And at the top of my class, you're going to see that we're going to create various variables that we're going to use in the op mode. First, I want to create a robot variable, which is of the type my hardware. This contains all your code for initializing and any functions that you created for driving. Yours might be called something different. That's all the member variables we're going to need. We're going to leave the ones that are part of the sample there because we're going to use those. And then you're going to see that we have our run op mode function. And that's where most of our work is going to come. The first thing we're going to do in this run op mode function is to make sure that we initialize our robot. We created the robot variable above, but now we need to initialize it. After that, you're going to see a line of code for webcam name. We're mapping the name of the camera that you put in the phone, which you'll see if you scan, mine came up as web, webcam1, and that should match that line of code. There's a couple more lines of code for setting up the camera, but they don't need to change. The next part that's important is that you need to set the Vuforia license key. Again, I'll put a link in the video description on how to get your own Vuforia license key. You copy it, you paste it into that line of code. There's a few more lines in the sample code here. You can leave those alone. They work perfectly well. Next, you're going to see code that loads the view marks. I'm using old relic recovery view marks for this video. For other challenges, you're going to have to load the correct assets. FTC bundles these into the robot controller code. Next, you're going to see some telemetry code, which is where we print information to the phone screen. And then we have the wait for start. So we wait for someone to press the play button. And now we're going to actually write the code that will grab what the camera is seeing and tell us if it's seeing a view mark. So after we activate the trackables, we're going to initialize a view mark variable with what the camera is seeing. Now they already have this line of code, but we want to move it above the while loop because we're going to use it after the while loop later on. So what this is doing is it's checking and saving into the view mark variable what it sees. So for my simple op mode here, I'm going to drive forward until I see a view mark, and then based on the view mark that I see, I'm going to turn right or left or back up. So this might be different for you, but I'm turning on all of my drive motors here. I'm going to give them all the same power so that they drive forward. Now 
Now we're at the while loop. The while loop is necessary because we want to check over and over and over what the camera sees. Now we already created the view mark variable so we can get rid of the type and reuse the view mark variable from above. Now we're going to check. We're going to say, is this view mark unknown? If it's unknown, we want to keep going, keep driving forward and keep checking. If it's not equal to unknown, then what we're going to want to do is break out of the loop and then continue on with instructions after that. So the view mark variable can be unknown, it can be left, right, or center. That is the names for the relic recovery view marks. If you're using other view marks, they might be different. I'm going to remove or delete this chunk of code related to poses. I'm not going to use them in this basic op mode. So like I said, in this if statement, if the view mark is not unknown, we want to break because it means that we are seeing one of the view marks, left, right, or center. So we want to leave the loop. All right, so find the curly brace that closes the while loop. You can see, it, for me, it's right here. You can see it highlights and shows the other one. Hit Enter, and we're going to create some more code after the while loop. All right, so we've been driving forward. Let's stop our robot. If you watched the previous videos, I created a stop driving function, which I'm going to use. And now that we broke out of the loop, because we know that we're seeing a view mark, let's do something based on that information. To do that, we're going to use an if statement. And we're going to say if the view mark is equal to the left view mark, then let's have the robot drive to the left. Turn left, I'm going to use my turning function that I created in a previous video. To turn left, I need to make sure that I give it a negative number so that it goes to the left. All right, now we're going to use an else if statement so that we can check to see if we're looking instead at the right view mark. And if it is the right view mark, I'm going to have my robot turn to the right. Then I'm going to add an else statement so that if it's not left and it's not right, everything else is going to drive straight backwards. I'm going to use my drive straight function from a previous video, give it a negative one so that it goes in reverse. After that, the last thing I want to do outside of the if else statement is to add a robot stop driving statement so that the robot will stop driving at the end of the program. All right, let's build it and see what happens. Well, that doesn't look like it's working. It drove right past. It didn't turn left or right or back up. All right, so let's go back to the speed at which I'm driving and change it from 0.5 to 0.2. Let's see if driving slower will make it easier for the camera to see the view mark. That is the right view mark and the robot turned right as expected. Here's the left view mark, so the robot should turn left. And here is the center view mark, so we programmed it so the robot should drive backwards. So this is a simple example showing how you can use view marks to have your robot behave in different ways. If you run into any issues with your program crashing on the robot, go to the Manage tab and download the logs. You might get a hint. I used the logs to diagnose a problem I was having with it crashing on my robot. I had a bad viewphoria. API key.